three, two, one. Well, hello everyone. This is Sony Artisan of Imagery and Singray Ambassador, Professional Don Smith. And I'm coming to you today from my home office in Central California. And before we get started, I'm sure uh, many of you, if not most of you, have been following the news about the terrible wildfires here in California. It's really bad. I've lived out here my entire life, and I gotta tell you, I haven't seen anything quite like what we are going through. I've heard from a lot of you via email, social media, that you're sending along thoughts and prayers, and I can't begin to tell you how much that means to all of us living out here. We will get through it. I'm very optimistic. We're, we're gonna get through this COVID. Good news came out today on that front. And uh, we are coming into the fall here in California. The, September is kind of the typical time for us, but we got a, kind of a double whammy as it started a little early in August. But uh, very confident we're going to get through all of this. And I just wanted to thank all of you again for sending along your well wishes. Hey, I've got six images here that I want to go through, and they're, they're really just terrific images. Um, again, these image reviews, I... I do these at my workshops all the time. And I don't like to just say an image is good or an image is bad. I, 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 I like to say, here's where I think the image can get stronger. Here's what I like about the image, if it's very strong. And I think we're gonna see six very strong images today, but I'm gonna point out more of why these images work. And we're starting off with this first one from Steve Vavrika. Um, and Steve just caught uh, these geese, I'm assuming geese, in, uh, this is a great action shot, uh, let's face it. I mean, uh, perfectly cropped. Um, the lead bird here is just tack sharp, razor sharp. The second bird, pretty much razor sharp. The third bird, you, you, you can see we're getting a little bit out of the... Uh, depth of field. This isn't an easy picture to capture and I'm sure this was a sequence of images that Steve shot and uh, this one is just absolutely beautiful. Part of the, what I really love about still images as opposed to video is just this. We can take a moment in time, one two thousandth of a second, whatever this was captured at, there's no metadata up here to let me know, but let's say he shot it at one, one thousandth, one two thousandth, who knows? He froze it down, and this is just a moment in time that we can linger and kind of get into the world of what it would be like. I don't know about you guys, but I dream all the time about flying. Isn't that kind of a common dream? And um, to just study these magnificent birds and what it must feel like to fly. Uh, the depth of field is just incredible. I love how the sky just fades to soft, unobtrusive. Um, it's just support. But if you're, if you're going to capture an image, um, this had to have been shot with some form of a telephoto lens. Fast shutter speed. Just, uh, Steve, you really just did a tremendous job. I, I couldn't say anything more to improve this image. And I always do want to talk about the photo logos because I think photo logo does a great job as you guys all know on producing logos and they produce my logo that I use all the time and I think that uh, taking the brown kind of um, color theme that runs through this image and putting it into, into the logo and down on the bottom right that's very non-obtrusive um, our eyes want to work in this photo right to left normally in our Western culture, we're trained to, to read left to right. So to have motion moving right to left is a little jarring to us, but that's good. That's what creates, Steve, what's called visual interest. And I think if we would have moved the logo over into the left side of the frame, that would have left this bottom just very empty. There's enough dynamism that's going on through the frame here that I believe that the uh, logo is in perfect position. Okay, let's move around now to the next image from Marilyn Schmidt and of a hummingbird. And this is just another fantastic shot. Again, a lot of my comments 
on the first picture would apply to this, a frozen moment in time of a small amazing bird with a very, very non-destructive, or excuse me, non-distracting background that allows this small, tiny hummingbird to just pop out. This, this would be about life size, right? We all know what the size of a hummingbird would be. And it's frozen. And to get that little catch light up here in the eye, I think was just incredible. If the wing would have covered the eye, um, I don't think this picture works. I think you need to be, uh, if you're gonna do any type of wildlife, um, birding, whatever, we need to see the animal's eye. Uh, if an eye is covered or, or not looking at us, not all the time, but most of the time, the pictures don't seem to hold. Um, the one thing, Marilyn, I, I would do is I would take this and I would move it a little more down in the bottom right corner and I would reduce the opacity. I've talked in past videos about the logos. They are a visual element and white, uh, this, our eye wants to go to the brightest part of the scene. This is design 1A that's taught in universities all across the world. And you have everything happening here. I might even recommend to take this logo and drop it down in here, but definitely the opacity has to be reduced. Um, I think it's important we have our photo logos on our picture. We need that. Um, but realize uh, that they are another element in the picture and they need to, a lot of thought has to be given to where they're placed and the opacity of your logo. We don't have to put everything at 100%. But great job, Marilyn. I really, really love this photo. Okay, Simaj uh, Thomas, and I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name too much. I really love this shot. I know where this is at. This is in Arches National Park, just outside of Moab, Utah. And the reason I know is I taught workshops here for 12 years. And um, this is coming right up to an area right here this whole wall back in here is called Park Avenue. And this is kind of the entrance area of the park. You wind up these switchbacks and then you come through here. Now, the idea of taking a human form, putting him, in, him or her in the middle of the roadway with this gorgeous sky is uh, very, very cool. Um, I, when I first saw this, I wanted to know what this was up in here. And I don't think on, on this I can really enlarge it much more but these are just rocks back up here, big boulders that have fallen down. There's constantly boulders that fall off of this. Think of, think of an onion and a, and a layer of an onion peeling off. And these boulders come crashing down. A lot of times they come across the highway and they got to close it. And, and they get up there with their big um, earth movers and they, and they move them around. I just really love this. I love the perspective and this leading line of this double-lined road, this is the main entrance into Arches. And then you get into Arches, and it's really just one road that goes miles and miles back. And there's a couple little spur roads that come off of it. If you've never been to Arches National Park, and you're coming to the United States, I highly recommend you put Arches on your list of must-see places to photograph and essentially about 45 minutes left of this picture you're coming to another great national park called Canyonlands. and my workshop used to deal in both of these uh, areas i really kind of miss going out to moab i know i'll be back now let me say something about the logo um, up on top never really works for me and it all has to do with what we call visual weight and up here, this is, the, again, it's an element, and it's a visual element, but elements have weight. Now, visual weight, you don't want to confuse that with physical weight. These rocks have physical weight and visual weight, okay? Um, as big as something is, has physical weight. And, and, and with the subject in the foreground, gives us great perspective on scale, on just how big these rocks are. I would definitely take this logo and it would either be on this side or this side 
and I would shrink that down a lot. I wouldn't run it that big. That's too much of a draw for my for the viewer's eye to want to come up to your logo. Uh, we want the logo to rest in harmony with the photo is how I, I think about using my logo. But I love the idea of this picture. The next time I'm out in Arches, I may just have to try this myself. Okay, uh, Chris Smith. Hey, Chris, we have another Smith here. Welcome. <laughs> uh, this is so cool. I shoot a lot of sea caves all the time, be it over in Hawaii or off on the California coast. We have a lot of sea caves. And the idea of putting a, a human element in the scene again lends to a sense of scale that if we didn't have the human element in there it would still be a beautiful picture no doubt it would be a beautiful scene um, but i think the human element um, really adds now a few areas where i would uh, consider you going back chris and taking a look uh, notice the difference from top to bottom and this is dark dark tones carry heavy visual weight then down here, the gorgeous reflection that comes into the sea cave, we've kind of cropped it off. So I'm going to challenge you to go back and look at your files, because I know you shoot more than just one file. We're seeing the best of the sequence. And see if maybe you have something more down in here and take a little less off the top. This is just too visually heavy. There's nothing visual interest going on up here we could lower that down to about in there. I think your logo's great. Uh, again, opacity, there's the issue. I would take it down, that's bright, my eye. Uh, do this little trick as you're watching this video. Cover your eye and then uncover it and tell me where your eye goes. And I'm gonna pretty much guarantee your eye's gonna jump down here. It may come in here first, but then it's gonna wanna leave this and come down to the logo. So again, we can reduce the size of the logo a little bit and reduce the opacity. So the logo's still there, but you wanna keep your viewer's eye engaged where all the action is happening, which is up in here. Okay, uh, Sem, uh, and I'm pronouncing your name again wrong, Thomas. Great, great portraiture shot here. I love this portraiture. One of the things you're doing right in portraiture and in wildlife is you're getting what we call eye to eye with your subject. And I think that's the most intimate view we can take with our subjects is when we get the camera eye level, be it animal, human form, whatever. Here you're definitely eye to eye. And the depth of field here where everything just on the left side of the face is razor sharp, and then everything else falls off into soft focus is just awesome. I love how you do that. My one thing I would challenge you is maybe to move this person's face a little closer to this edge because the gaze is coming off to the left here and we want to give a little more air to here. Great job of the catch lights here. I, I'm not sure if that's window light or if you're using a large softbox, but um, again, fantastic job. And we've talked about this logo. This one, uh, again, I would probably burn, I would challenge you to burn down this side of the sweater, your model's sweater, and drop it down into here. Now, these are just my thoughts on the logos and, and you guys can agree or disagree. I, I, I just tell you how I would do it if it's my photo. This is what's important. The logo is a secondary visual element, so we have to be always consciously thinking about where we're placing that. I want to finish up on a uh, very cool shot by Pareg Kahari. <laughs> and I am so sorry, guys, if I'm pronouncing your names wrong here. This is just a beautiful, gorgeous use of depth of field. And um, I love everything about this image. The color contrast, we don't talk enough about that in photos. First of all, the light. But let's, let's start with that. The light is soft and muted. This is the type of light you're gonna find, find in open shade, overcast sky. Uh, if the sun was directly in here, this would be just too chaotic. 
So by shooting on a softer light day or late or early in the day or in shadows, um, this is the kind of effect you can get. And with a big telephoto glass shooting wide open, you, uh, the, the focus is right here where it should be on the butterfly. So we've got dark and white tones beautifully contrasted with these soft, muted, out of focus green colors. And I don't want to say tones up here. I want to say color in the, in the butterfly. Black and white colors against the green colors. That's color contrast. That's a huge thing you should be thinking about in your, in your photos. I talk about always starting with tonality. And it's like building a house. We have to build the frame of the house. The second thing, I, and one of the most important things, I think, is color contrast. Uh, contrast in general and how we want to present our pictures. Where you place your uh, logo, I think, is perfect. We have a centered um, uh, subject, and so the subject or, or the uh, logo is right below it. Same color, you picked it up off the butterfly, very well done there. So it, it's there, but it's not a big eye draw as it would be if this, this was in white. So great job. Um, great job to all, all of you who submitted these photos. And uh, I'm having a blast. I got to tell you, I'm, my wife and I uh, and my partner, Ron Madra out of Nashville, Tennessee, and his wife, we, a week from today when I'm recording this, uh, we're going to be out in, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and we're going to start our very first workshop since the COVID pandemic hit out in, in Grand Teton National Park. We are so looking forward to it. Our participants are looking forward to it. We're going to be uh, wearing masks, social distancing, do, following all the guidelines that we need to follow. But uh, we are so excited to start to get out and start teaching our workshops again. So um, this is it for our September review. Keep sending the images along. I can't wait to see what comes up in October. And uh, fingers crossed that the great news we're hearing on the vaccines uh, comes to fruition sometime soon. The world could sure use it. Okay, everyone. So until next time, everybody out there, stay safe, stay positive, and stay creative. Keep going. We'll talk to you next month.